Hello ladies and gents, I am Anna Diffin, and welcome back to From the Depths Ashes of the Empire Community Edition. In this episode we have quite a few little designs to showcase, so let's move over to today. First of all, we have a design from Richard Dustley, the Pack Tank. This one is actually going to be replacing the one in the forces, due to the one which I was utilising had actually been set up incorrectly. So that battle where I was going around in the commander position, it wasn't actually operating correctly at that time. So this design will be fixing that. Otherwise, I've been informed that it's basically the same. But as to new designs, let's go have a look at Charge Haradon's Bombardment Terror. So this one, all the designs I have from Charge Haradon. This one actually has rams at the front, so could probably do well against the white flares who like to ram these things. So it has a fairly small cram at the side. Is that the same on each side? It is, and hmm, it's a fairly undefended cram from below. Okay. A heavy arm at the top and then nothing there. I think these were just clagged on the side as a why not, I think. <laughs> and a few extra blocks, let's go for it. What about these APS guns? These are big beastie things. So let's see how this fares. Uh, yeah, let's go King Cobra. So a little cram cannon. And there come the main guns. That's slower than I was expecting it, actually. So those are big, big shells to be fired that quickly. But then again, this is only a single object. It isn't a sub-object cannon. And the shells are definitely large enough. And this actually makes it more of a sensible tank rather than the absolute colossal sub-object beasts which have been deploying from Charge Hard on already. It is, yeah, it is very resilient. Taking a huge amount of damage there. A lot of punishment. Yeah, absorbing a lot of damage with all those loads and loads of corners and wedges. So that is very good. Next we have the very small, cheap design from Kneecap. And I will spawn in a couple of these at a decent altitude. Actually, speaking of, there was another design uh, which I have already used, which I was going to use again. Um... The Nix Mini. I think it was the Nix Mini? No, it wasn't the Nix Mini. It, um, oh, it, was the, it was the other one I spawned in at the same time as I was going to spawn in another one in a different force. Nah. I'll spawn it in from the main game, but it's the actual other small drone I had at the time. So. Yes, let's spawn a couple of these little breezes. And send them against the Taipan. So yeah, they have a few little missiles, but they're very, very erratic movement. Let's keep them nicely dodging, though they do have a tendency to might want to crash into each other, which could be a problem. And they're just dancing together at the moment. A couple of small missiles and okay, you just got into space. Come back down. Very, very erratic movement. I'd like to try not to deploy these against the lightning hoods, since the laser will just shoot them instantly. Against the flares, they'll be much more useful. Their attacks doing more. Well, a little bit of damage also being able to avoid the vast amount of shots fired at them. Let's look at it. Taipan's firing its cannon, but it's nowhere near. Admittedly, the white flare, I suppose, will be a lot closer, but not by much. Now we have the fighter bomber, the red one, by Elwina. We had the yellow one before, but this one's faster, because it's red. A lot of... There, and it also fires its bombs at an angle, which is good. A 
launches its bombs towards its target. And yes, it is definitely faster, which is very important. We've got a lot of shooty bits as well. Got a couple of missiles backwards there, but there come the bombs. Skimming along and bouncing and detonating underneath the hull. We have a significant amount of components from the Taipan there. Very quick. Seems to have a very long attack run. But there we go, that is why. It was loading its main cannons. So it fires a small barrage, and there come the bombs. They're very nicely guided in. Yeah, very nice. Oh, and a couple more, for good measure. Seems to be aiming a little bit to the side. Hasn't had a good chance of killing the AI. But that is a very nice bomber. And definitely something I'd like to see fight on in the campaign. Now we have the Oiton medium tank by mainfall. Fairly mid-range tank, it seems. Nice lights there. Not many designs have had lights. Red intensity might seem a little bit much, but this will look very impressive and the nighttime combats. Fairly blocky standard design. A few repair bots at the rear there. And there we go. A nice high rate of fire main gun there. Getting a touch high. There we go. Once it lands on target, that's just coring its way through to the AI. This has been the most effective killer so far this episode. Next, we have the Predator Annihilator by Damadoc82. Um, basically, complete opposite of the fighter bomber. This is a laser tank. And much like the Predator Annihilator, it has twin las cannons at the side and las, las cannons at the, on the sponsons there. And a hunt killer missile at the top. Oh, excellent. So laser combiners there. How big is this laser? Decent size. It's got a lot of fuel. Decent amount of power, tons of power, but 8,000 power should do quite nicely for a design such as this. Um, I think its target is already dead, isn't it? Let's try another one. Yep, AI dead really rather quickly. Let's have a look at the power consumption of that laser. Hmm. So, 4,800 power. Not too bad. Not the best laser ever, but decent enough for slow fire rate. And it is quite... It is difficult to get very strong lasers in Ashes of the Empire. Particularly if you want them to be in anything other than just a box. I've managed it, but my laser craft is just a hovering box, and that box is made of slopes. It looks absolutely hideous. It just looks the part. It's definitely able to do the damage as well. In a significant number of hits to the rear armor there. And surviving really quite well. I said we're going to be used to in the pack. So lastly, we have the T TH1-2280 by Eagle. Another one of Eagle's tanks. This one, a quad-tracked design. And nice, some nice aesthetic choices here and here as well. 
make it look like these tracks look more like the real thing without utilizing after cataclysm. Pair bots at the rear and decoy drones. Combination of missiles and cannons. This reminds me quite a lot of the mammoth tank with the way its missiles and cannons are set up. Nice long range missiles, actually. Kind of having a little bit more trouble landing its mark. There we go, eventually it does strike. No, oh, they are railgun assisted. What's in them? Quite a small shell. But nicely on target. And this tank seems very resilient to damage. So should be able to take a, quite a beating. And all these tracks would keep it afloat on the terrain without grinding itself to pieces. Yeah, very nice tank and some very good aesthetics. But, yeah, definitely reminds me a lot of the Mammoth tank from Command & Conquer series. That's it for the showcase. Let's go head over to the campaign proper. Uh, yes, I would like to view this force. Load vehicle in, and I want to utilise... Today... Pack tank to scrap that one, repair that one, yes, and take a way. very short moment for it to get attacked. Uh, repair you, yes, you should way. be able to repair that force. Now they are repairing just a little bit slowly. Let's move that over there, then back. To, so I'm going to move the haul ups, refuel that one, move that here. Ref resupply then head over to the light tank yes. this community force the southern one to get that repaired up as well which community force they don't want to add in the designs 17 18 i think i might add them into this force oh well, there we are much more i wasn't able to carry on Let's add in, no, rather than radar balloon, let's add in that force. So there we go. All these vehicles are ready to go. The weather is absolutely atrocious. Let's begin the battle. Do massively outnumber them, which is good. What are they spawned in? One of their flyers. One of their Pack tanks and one of their laser ones. Cool. And the weather's getting even worse. Okay, so you're warping. You can see the missiles fly towards you at least. EMP strikes. Slowing you down momentarily, allowing the rest of the missiles to strike and destabilize you, making you fall into a spin. Okay, the repair tank just got he just got hit heavily. The cannons are firing down, taking out one the hoods there, which is too damaged. Not that I can see what's going on. He's even worse from that view. Just if you can sometimes see what's going on from the actual land and ground level. Did you just drop a load of mines? Uh, oh, there's enemy. So hard to see what's going on. You aren't dead yet, but you will be momentarily. Get struck 
by Tai and now AI dead. Another particle solo tank comes in, but the particle solo is knocked off almost instantaneously. I'm not even sure if you had a chance to fire it. The nose crashes into the ground and it flips over onto its top, exposing its underbelly. And already it is too damaged. Hopefully that's about it. Oh no, there should be another spawn. Where is it? There it is. Now, the flyer. Fires? Huh, just heavy missiles. That was just lasers. And so it's the EMP is struck disabling the local weapon controllers on the laser systems. And now it's going to be a matter of moments as it is ripped apart as it drifts down to Nita. Okay, AI dead. Wait, something else spawned in? Another one of you. The weather clears up just as the battle comes to a fold. Thanks, game. Let's jump down here and spawn in today's designs. Right, so we go Barb and Barb and Tower, two breezes, fight bomber, the ocean, the project of annihilator, and TH1. Over on this force, I would like to respawn in another one of the little planes. There we go, it's the Hornet Strike Fighter. So I spawned a couple because I don't know where the other ones are. And it shouldn't have been defeated yet. So let's go up here. You need to go over and attack this tile. Though, can't really do it while you're still heavily damaged. You have to get your repairs in effect before going to help the radar balloon. And this group, yeah, you, you just attack this, this lot. And the third community force is ready to go. Let's just begin it. It's in terrible weather once more. Follow this array of missiles flying through. Striking, striking target. Ooh. My design strips off part of the armor there. But the repair heli does get in into repairing stuff this time. Excellent. Most of the tanks moving to advance. I'm trying to focus that something. I bet it's one of the raptures, isn't it? You are irritating. Another one of the designs has spawned in. The rear of everything. The rapture's gone and sunk itself in the water. That means the load designs are going to be able to take it on properly. The anti air tank is doing its job with its fragmentation rounds, spreading friendliness and joy in the form of high velocity rounds. Oh, it has been too damaged rather rapidly. I'm going to head towards the Rapture. That's too damaged. Okay, that's fine. So I'm now sitting on the anti-air tank waiting for the new flare to spawn in, which I think is a nuke. Oh no, it's not.
there, you see? Fragmentation's pinging, shield's pinging it, and the frag's going through, damaging the hole underneath. Then the missiles arrive, stripping out and basically turning off all the shields with the amount of EMP there. Allows all the rest of the projectiles to work in unison and kill their target. And goodness knows where the other enemy is going to spawn because I can't see a thing. Oh no, it's about to finish. Cool. So over here, there is repairs, but they're very, very slow. Not much ha has in the way of repair tentacles, it seems. So there's a heal caster. Looks like that's the only one. Let's spawn this group in. And then rearrange it so that none of the new designs are in battle. Make sure there's nothing going to spawn in on top of itself. Done. So let's begin the battle. See how things are going. There's a long way to find the enemy, and it seems to be in some sort of sandstorm. But again, cannot see a thing. Yep, I think I'm definitely going to have to adjust the weather in future campaigns to prevent it go this bad. I don't mind it being night, but this stormy weather it can be atmospheric, but mostly I just find it annoying. The thing is, it can affect detection systems, make them less effective, but to be perfectly honest, I don't think it matters. So let's have a look at the tech view on this thing. You can see from a mile around anyway. Yeah. Oh, they have got auto detection on, so that isn't necessarily a accurate portrayal of its detection rate. Oh, little bit more gun there is working nicely. It's advanced all the way to the front. Flip the annoying rapture over. Yes. strikes I guess. It's a vent to do most of its shells with damage to the APS there. Because there will be a beholder coming in and I now know how to capture these things really quickly. So it's two damage to five seconds so that gives me a few moments to get ready to jump at the most opportune moment. There we go. Jumped on it. down into the underbelly as quickly as possible and let's break the lower AI first because the upper one is more vulnerable to outside fire. That's that one destroyed. Quickly go up. This one. go. Very rapidly capture that, pull all. It's still at 90% health. So yeah, very quick at capturing those beholders now. As soon as you know where the AI is, they they do go down very quickly. So this combo force has a wonderful speed of one meters per second. Yay. Because of all these things being damaged. Probably one came into battle towards the end and just slowed, yeah, slowed everything down. Just because it wasn't built, it was just a lump of blocks. So you kind of want to send this attack force against the 
upwards. But at the same time, it will take, it will take heavy casualties. Yeah. Eh, whatever, just do it. There you go. I've renamed all the forces, so we've got the first community, the third, and the second. The second being the weakest of them at the moment. Now, the HUD HQ is in this area. So I could actually build like a wall of defenses here and just keep on killing all these for resources. And I might do that because their HQ is bugged at the moment and doesn't doesn't work. And I don't really want to be fighting against the HQ, which doesn't work. The HQs are meant to be these epic battles and if it's just broken, it kind of defeats the point, I guess. Uh, let's have a look. Let's view. Okay, well, let's go and have observed this fight then. There we go. So it's a little bit of a different lineup this time. Just so we can try and keep things a bit fresh in each battle. Okay, so I am very close to them in materials. So we've had a lot spawn in on each side. All of those firing against the Cracker Tower. Just kind of to be expected of Judge Haradon's designs, or at least the ones with all the millions of guns. It looks like it has been caught this time and been hit heavily. Oh, you have repair! Oh, the repairs are coming from that attack, hitting you. Okay, I thought it was the other way around. Rakuto gets really close to hitting that target, but misses in the end. Broad inside job, fires, ah, and it skims its shots just past its target. Simple laser tank there is currently ramming broad inside job. And there's the missile turret, just chilling, firing its missiles doing awesome things, I guess. Uh, board inside job is about to shoot Taurus little tank. But no, it doesn't in the end. Simple lasers showing up actual lasers. As it cuts off the entire base of the tank there. Again, beaming through, breaking up all the internal components. Look at that, it's ridiculous. Half this tank has been melted away into a couple of barrages from this tank. It's now already too damaged. Excellent. Uh, ignore salvage. Make sure everyone's ignoring salvage. Oh dear, the board inside job is not looking too healthy. But it's absorbed a tremendous amount of hits. Let's spawn over on it. See if I can't repair at least some of it. Well, the simple laser tank does all the damage. These tanks now are so close they can't actually aim at their target and they're ramming into each other. Boys inside job is still standing. He's actually repaired a significant amount so far. You. Ah, think that. <laughs> Just bang. Flip. Solid rounds doing very well against the hoods. You're now too damaged. The poor board inside job still taking a lot of hits. But surviving, as is the Krakatoa's turret. 
somehow survived getting shot through the side there and hasn't actually detonated its APS. Wow. Simple laser tank just burning a hole straight through the heavy armor. Heavy armor there. Almost straight to the AI. Single bow. Another shot should AI dead this. Tank Delta plan deciding to take its toll on this foe. Ooh, and that is an enemy one. Phew. Board inside job has just about survived at 64%. Has had an awful lot of repairs down, done to it. So nice hesh rounds pinging into the armor here. Hitting at a slight angle, so hesh spalling is not really damaging the inside, though. Looking at this thing, there's not much inside left to be damaged. The AI Citadel, but that's about it. I was going to try and capture that, get it away from Taurus tank, but it looks like the explosion grav ram effect essentially did just that. Oh no, the IK-17 has been too damaged. It's being sustained by repairs. That did so much work this episode. Or this battle. Missile base on this one. Not really hitting anything, but it lands on a target. Vents its rounds. Oh no. All friendly is going to now fire at this. Jump in. Try to. Well, it's being thrown away. damaged. Don't think it can get to the AI in time. Might be able to. No, enemy ships. There's the last couple of HUD's designs now. Almost everything has spawned. Has everything? Okay, everything has spawned in. That's a bit worrisome because that means I have lost a few designs this battle. Fire has been downed. This leaves the Wisp, which is currently tearing through my tanks. Lost a couple of its simple lasers now, though. And the PID system locked offline, but still rammed my tank. Surviving, but only barely. But it is now too damaged there. The plane is actually still technically alive. Let's jump out. See if we can capture the thing. 
blow up the front section there. And I captured it. Hello. The 1K17 was defeated. Um, not just yet. The broad inside drop was defeated. Did really well, but it was defeated. Oh, the Panthetonia. I was doing so well. But unfortunately, it too got defeated. As did the Krakatoa Mark II. And you got defeated. So that was a very nasty battle. We have to really bolster the second community force next episode. First community has been bolstered this episode. Not strength 27 yes. and the third community is actually just by far the strongest force but that's because it's been tailored to deal with things so let's take on the yes, lightning hood force yeah I'm, I might spawn in that tank which was destroyed as I said I want to try and make this a actual blockade force so the stronger it is the better really though I could just create a laser wall of well, I think lasers, um, just because they'll be hit scanning, kill things really quickly. If I made a, an array of like five, six very high powered laser turrets, position them here, and then any force of lightning hoods which come in would be annihilated by those. But that's getting ahead of myself. But so let's do this battle in the nasty weather. Infuriation. I'm going to kind of skip most of the battle, though. Just want to get in place of the looks to try and capture that instantly. reason more capturing is that I can't see anything really going on in the battle anyway, so I might as well use this effort to just cut the, the battle into bigger sort of segments and try and capture things. Oh no, it's going to spawn in without me there. There we go. Damn it. Wow, it just kind of like disengorged his drones and slammed them into the ground. Oh, one's mine. <laughs> Both are mine. It does like kind of cool though. Can't get up to it. No, no, no. Come back. Come back here. All of them are doing okay. The Type E is a little bit low on health. Otherwise, well, doing okay. So it looks is now grinding itself along the ground. A little bit slower now. It's now actually reachable to get into the cockpit, if only it wasn't going so darn quickly. That's a massive internal explosion there. Those missiles are doing an incredible amount of damage. Because when they aren't getting shot down by lambs, they have a chance to do that. And explosive missiles do knock each other out of the way, but the looks is such a big target, I don't think that's made a blind bit of difference. Come back here. They're going to be able to capture you now. Might be travelling at this speed. I suppose we'll be actually going on one of these vehicles which is nearby, but even they aren't that close. And that's been too damaged, so we will be despawning momentarily anyway. There we go. Lots and lots of materials. Excellent. It's a victory. Hmm. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to advance much this episode. 
and didn't really didn't even get to show off the new designs from the, in the first community force just because they didn't actually repair i'm sending the hauler down to help them out in that regard but yeah so sorry i didn't manage to showcase designs but that does mean that next episode they won't get deleted should they get destroyed but that's all I have time for today, so thank you very much for watching this episode of From the Depths, Ashes of the Empire with myself and Adifan. If you did enjoy the episode, please leave a like and or comment below, as it is always great to hear from you a lot. Also, be sure to check out the, my channel for other From the Depths videos and other games, and be sure to swing by my Discord channel for a more direct interactive chatting. Otherwise, that's it for me for now, and I shall see you next time. But until then, I'm out. Goodbye!